Good morning, everybody. I'm in my study this morning, and before I start today's assembly, I wanted to say a huge thank you on behalf of all of the teachers. I'm saying thank you for your politeness, for your positivity, and for the way that you are getting on with all of the assignments, all of the work that is set, and you're doing it to the best of your abilities. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed at all. Uh, the teachers are sending me lots and lots of messages. So well done to each and every one of you for everything that you're doing. I thought that the bank holiday weekend was a very timely weekend. I had a sense that over the past week or so, even though you've been working so hard, everybody was starting to get a little bit tired and a little bit frustrated perhaps with the remote learning, not because nobody's working hard, everybody's working hard, everybody is doing their best, but we are missing our friends, we are missing um, parts of our families, and also we are spending far too long on computers in my view at the moment. So well done for everything you're doing. Hopefully over the past three days you've had a good chance to have a rest. We've got two more weeks now until we get to the half-term holiday, so let's make our very best effort over those two weeks. We talk a lot about the OBH way and you are all exemplifying the OBH way day after day after day. The courage that you show when you're attempting to remote learn, the way that you are throwing yourselves into tasks is commendable. The kindness that you show to each other, the kindness that you show um, to others and in fact to others outside of our community in some of the charity work you're doing again is simply fantastic. The pride with which you are attempting the assignments to, to give it your best in every single thing that you do is again remarkable. Respect is something that we talk about a lot. That's respect for each other, respect for ourselves, respect for our teachers. I cannot tell you the number of comments that I've had from teachers um, saying how polite you have been and how well behaved you have been online. So well done. It's been a, an absolutely fantastic effort. Responsibility. Now again, something that, that you have shown in absolute buckets over recent weeks, you are all taking responsibility for your own learning. The commitment that you are showing is quite phenomenal. It's, it's really quite remarkable with all of the difficulties and all of the challenges that you are still um, cracking on with things to the very best that you can, making sure that you finish things uh, as best you can. And if we can't quite finish everything because there's a lot to do, you are making responsible decisions about what is important and that is really um, a, a great thing to have done. And lastly, then we have community as well. And I've already commented on this, how you're showing kindness towards each other. But the community events that you're getting involved in, again, have been absolutely brilliant. And we see that um, each week in the OBH email. Please do keep those community events going on. The Ready, Steady, Cook Challenge launched by Mr. Drake and Ainsley Harriet last week. Have a go at that. Also, the All You Need Is Love song. Please, please, please do contribute to that. So far, we have got about a dozen people who have contributed. Please have a go at singing the song. Sing with your parents. Sing with your siblings sing on your own um, try and sing the whole song if you can rather than the clip of it and email it to love at obh.co.uk the deadline for those entries is next monday which is the 18th of may so please have a go um, it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you play it's just important that you have a go because you will really enjoy the finished product when we put the video together um, now we're moving on to today's assembly. Today's assembly is about um, a chap called Spencer Percival who was a British Prime Minister and it's about how history repeats itself. So this is the assembly. Often in times of crisis we think that there is nobody who has been in this particular situation before. That means that sometimes we don't know how to answer certain questions that are put before us and sometimes we don't even know what the questions are. However, Almost all circumstances have been repeated in a very similar fashion, if not an exact one, in history. An example of this would have been the situation with our Prime Minister Boris Johnson two weeks ago. You may recall that he spent several nights in an intensive care bed, and since his release from hospital after thankfully surviving, he himself has admitted that for several days it wasn't clear which way things were going to go. His office even made plans for what would happen should he die. 208 years ago, to this very day, another British Prime Minister, Spencer Percival, was assassinated. He was shot in the chamber of the House of Commons by a merchant called John Bellingham, who was very upset with the amount of tax that he was having to pay. Spencer Percival had not been one of the most successful Prime Ministers, and in fact, as a leader, he was seen as being quite diminutive. He was quite a small man who uh, had a pale complexion and often dressed in black. He didn't seem to have that much of a clear personality, perhaps very different to Boris Johnson. However, 
Spencer Percival had been the Prime Minister through times of crisis. He had been the Prime Minister who had dealt with the upheaval caused by the French Revolution. He was also the Prime Minister who had passed the Regency Bill in 1810 when the King, George III, had apparently become mad. So Spencer Percival was somebody who had dealt with various crises and got through them despite leading a weak government at the time. With his assassination came uncertainty. Nobody quite knew who was going to lead the country going forward. However, Earl Liverpool soon took the mantle and became one of the most successful prime ministers of the early 19th century. It just goes to show that even in times of crisis, there is normally a way forward. Everybody needs to stay calm and carry on. Over the past weekend, we've heard lots of stories about how older generations, perhaps the generations of my grandparents, your great-grandparents, coped with the, the evils of the Second World War. This included things like the Blitz, the Battle of Britain, um, it, when it looked as though Britain would be defeated while it fought Germany on its own. One thing that those older generations can teach us is that people can carry on and things do get back to normal. Lots of photographs were seen over the weekend of children playing in the rubble in cities like London after heavy German bombing raids. We've also seen pictures of people sleeping in tube stations to shelter from the bombs. We had parents who were away fighting for years at a time, often held in prisoner of war camps, but people managed to carry on, and they did so with a good spirit. Again, there are lessons that we can learn from that while we face the current lockdown situation. And as we talk about the end of wars, the end of the First World War coincided with something called the Spanish Flu. During that pandemic over 100 years ago, many millions of people died. And again, that wasn't the only pandemic that has been in history. Most of us will have heard of something called the Black Death. In 1348, this raged through much of the world, starting in Asia and spreading through Europe, and killed approximately a third of the population. Devastating, however, for the survivors, it meant that there was an increase in pay that led to prosperity and some political awakening during the Middle Ages. Now, again, I don't pretend that this is something that we should celebrate overly. A pandemic is a pandemic. Nobody wants to be where we are. However, we need to remember that there will also be good things that come out of this pandemic. If that means that we realise the importance of family, that we realise the importance of the environment, and we lead our lives in a more sustainable and positive way, then that is not a bad thing. Another thing that we can learn from the weekend that's just passed is how we can celebrate when this crisis does come to an end. VE Day has always been about celebrating the end of the war. The very first VE Day, Victory in Europe Day in 1945, was met with huge amounts of partying and dancing. Although the celebrations this weekend had to be slightly different, I am sure many of you had some street parties or Zoom calls with people to keep in touch and celebrate. It's something that is hugely important and as we come to the end of this current crisis we will do the same kind of things. So we will have parties, we will come together, we will see our friends and we will celebrate. We don't know when that's going to happen but trust me it will. So wherever you are watching this assembly and however you are feeling about the current crisis do remember that it will not last forever. We will get back to normality. The key thing is that we need to keep calm, we need to keep positive, and we need to keep working with a sense of purpose. If we can do those things and look forward to the happy day when the crisis ends and we can have our big party, we will get through it fine.